Thank you for joining me. Today's Wheel and Anchor webinar all about Austria and the province of South Tyrol, the German-speaking part of Italy. A lot of people don't know that. Uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to um, yeah, take, telling you all about it. Let me say a few quick words, first of all. So for those of you who've heard this a thousand times, please tune me out for the next minute. Uh, Wheel and Anchor is a community of travelers from all across Canada. Uh, and we pride ourselves in sharing sort of a like-minded approach to travel around the world. So our philosophy is uh, we take things a little bit slower, we like to have fun, um, and we like to sort of combine this idea of travel for the purpose of learning and understanding and adventure, uh, but also socializing and uh, and and getting and getting together with. Um, uh, getting to know other people, other members. Um, we are predominantly Canadian. Uh, I mean, as a company, we're certainly Canadian, but our members are sort of 99% uh, Canadian. Uh, and uh, we we really like that because it just allows you when you're sitting around the dinner table and, and having conversation or you're, you know, riding, uh, uh, you know, in our mini coach or in uh, on the train to the next destination, you can kind of have the kind of conversations um, as if you're amongst friends. And, and this really is one of the, the key differentiators that we have um, at Wheel and & Anchor. And of course, our goal of all of this as travelers is to just become more well-traveled and to visit the kind of places that are, you know, obviously the, the conventional tourist spots that everybody wants to see. And, you know, in the case of Austria, you know, Vienna. Um, and, uh, but, but um, this is a perfect example of a trip that is a little bit more off the beaten track. Um, so we're going to take you to parts of Austria that most people are not aware of because um, in our minds, it's uh, a lot about, uh, you know, Vienna, Salzburg, and that's kind of where it ends for most people. Um, and along the way, we're going to meet quite some characters, um, many of whom I know myself, and I'll tell you a little bit about that why in a minute. But uh, uh, as I say, just to wrap up, the philosophy of Wheel and Anchor is about being well-traveled, um, taking our time and and really getting connected to um, our fellow members and all the people that we meet along the way. So just uh, by way of quick introduction, my name is Gordon Dreger. I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor, curator of all the tours, particularly, well, all of them, but particularly ones like this, um, because this trip uh, is sort of designed on the heels of the, the book that I wrote and, and published uh, just a, a few years ago, and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. Um, and I'm joined, of course, by my amazing team of people. Uh, today, we've got Paula here, uh, one of our senior trip specialists. Good morning, Paula. Uh, Hello. <laughs> to answer questions that you might have about this and all of our other trips. Uh, and of course, Barb as well. So Paula and Barb are our frontline folks uh, that uh, that sort of, uh, yeah, make sure that you as our members uh, get get what you came for. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's that. Uh, my plan today is to take you through a tour of parts of Austria that, again, most people probably haven't seen. Even if you've been to Austria before, um, a lot of this will be new to you. And that's what makes this particularly interesting. Um, so I'm going to show you some, show you some shots of the places that we're going to see uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, bring you around Austria and South Tyrol. This brings me to the part of the reason for this trip. Um, some of you may be aware, I, uh, I authored a book back in 2018, uh, which uh, was an inquiry into hospitality. Um, Austria has uh, incredible hospitality. And, and when, I'm, when I talk about hospitality, I talk about in a, in a tourism sense, in a sense of, you know, the hotels, the restaurants, the, the um, alpine huts. Everywhere you go, where you come across people in Austria, I want to say you really are delivered a service and friendliness and professionalism that is, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's world leading. Um, and I may be a bit biased, quite honestly. I went to school in Austria for to a hotel and tourism management school um, because. Uh, it is recognized as one of the leading ones in the world, uh, and uh, e e hospitality as a as a as a concept is really really important to me in our tours because it it kind of makes the difference between sort of going along for the ride um, and having re really an experience that evokes all those emotions and triggers all the senses. So. Um, 
If you haven't already gotten a copy of the book, we, we've been sending it out uh, uh, um, to our members in advance of some of our trips. Um, and uh, we will we will continue to do that. But uh, if you even haven't been on a trip and you're curious about um, why Austria is such a, a hospitality um, uh, gem and a, and a hidden gem for many, um, you can also go uh, online. You can order our book as well uh, and, uh, and and get a copy of that. So this trip follows um, not exactly the footsteps steps that I took in writing this book, but uh, but a number of the places that um, are included in this program are are mentioned uh, are referred to in the book. So that's what it's all about. So talking about now where we're going on this trip. So Austria, of course, as you know, is sort of in the middle of Europe uh, and is surrounded by uh, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, uh, Slovenia, Hungary, and uh, Slovakia, as well as the Czech Republic to the north. Um, so uh, originally part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I'm not going to do a whole history lesson now. Um, it's a relatively small country. In fact, Austria is barely larger than Lake Superior. Uh, so in terms of uh, size, um, which makes it interesting because with a population of 8 million, it, uh, it, 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 it is densely populated, although you'll see we'll go into areas where there's absolute incredible nature and you don't see sort of see anybody or anything. So I think it's the right balance. Um, and we're going to start our trip in Vienna, the capital. Most of you will know Vienna. In fact, a lot of our members have probably visited Vienna. If you've done a Danube River cruise, for example, typically they stop for at least one night, sometimes two uh, in Vienna. So you may have had a taste of the city already. But the fo focal point of this trip is actually not that. It's the other parts of Austria. So uh, we'll spend a couple of nights in Vienna. We'll have a wonderful sort of culinary oriented tour. Um, we'll then drive down to the province of Styria. And Styria is sort of this whole southeastern chunk of the country. It combines some of the eastern Alps, um, as well as the rolling countryside of the Volkanland, uh, and it, it borders Hungary over here. Um, and we're going to be staying in a castle hotel uh, in uh, in uh, Papfenstein, it's called. Uh, and we'll, we'll be down here for a, a lovely five-night stay that will enable us to explore this part of Austria that, again, is for, for certainly for North American travelers, for Canadians, it's most people don't get around this area. And it's so picturesque. Anyway, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get into that in a minute. So we're going to spend five nights down here um, exploring this part corner of the country. We're then going to drive up, stopping in Graz, which is the second largest city in Austria, up into Austria's Lake District. We're going to be staying right here in St. Wolfgang on the aptly named Lake Wolfgang. Uh, and we're going to be visiting such highlights as Hallstatt, which is the picture postcard town of Austria. Um, so we'll be in here for a, a bunch of nights, and then we will uh, cross over uh, the, uh, the, the so-called German corner, this little bit of Germany here, to get to Innsbruck. Uh, Innsbruck will be familiar to you. Of course, they hosted two Olympics there. Um, and we're going to spend a bunch of days in Innsbruck as well, um, exploring uh, uh, the area, the, the, the mountains, but also some of the history uh, and some of the, the fascinating um, uh, um, uh, production houses, uh, if you will, that are in Tyrol that, uh, once again, a lot of people don't realize uh, the, the type of things that they they produce in Austria. So that'll be interesting. Then for those who uh, are just going to join us on the main program, the trip will end there. So you have the option of flying out right out of Innsbruck. There's, an, there's a nice airport in Innsbruck with connections via Frankfurt um, back to Canada. Um, or of course, you can uh, easily hop a train and get up to Munich to fly out, which is uh, only about two hour train right away. So it's fairly close by. Our extension program takes us into South Tyrol. So N Tyrol is this province of Austria here that takes up the uh, the western side of the country. Um, and South Tyrol is the northernmost uh, province of Italy, which um, used to be part of Austria, if you'll remember back to uh, the First World War. Uh, at, but it became part of Italy as part of the deal that they, they made at the end of the war. Um, and uh, as a result, it's largely still German speaking. It's a very funny dialect of German. Um, and we're going to be staying in Bolzano, the capital of this region, um, and visiting the Dolomite Mountains, visiting the wonderful Venosta Valley that goes up here towards Switzerland. Um, it's just, it's just, it's a really, really beautiful part of the Alps. So that is the geographic overview. Let's go into the day-by-day -day itinerary. This 
by the way, is a shot of uh, Lake Wolfgang in the Lake District of Austria. It's so beautiful with all the mountains and, you know, these little towns with castles on them. I mean, it's, it's it doesn't get more picturesque. We'll start off with Vienna. Most people, as I say, will be familiar with it already, Vienna. Um, the city of music, the home of uh, Mozart and, and many other uh, classical composers. Um, and we'll have time. Um, we don't know uh, at this point exactly what the concert schedule is going to be in May. But um, for me, visiting Vienna um, also involves taking in one of the amazing concerts at, uh, at the Vienna Concert House at the Opera, the National State Opera House. Um, the the Musikverein, there's so many places to take in music in Vienna. Um, we we we'll typically don't uh, get up to too much on the first day in Vienna. We um, allow you uh, time to sort of um, rest and relax and catch up from it, from the jet lag. And uh, we'll get together for a little icebreaker in Vienna um, and raise a glass and then sort of get into it on our one full day in Vienna. If you haven't been to Vienna before, um, my suggestion is, Fly in a couple of days earlier um, and 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 take in the city. It is absolutely worth it. A lot of Vienna is very walkable. Um, the the so called Ring, the first district, uh, it can all be done on foot. You have the major sites in there: the Hofburg Palace, the uh, the uh, Baroque City Hall. You've got Saint Stephen's Cathedral. Um, uh, you've got numerous other um, amazing sites to see. And honestly, um, I'm going to be in Vienna in. Um, um, about two weeks from now, uh, and uh, I, I, I've been a hundred times, um, and and for me, there's always something new and interesting to explore in this uh, in this city. We're going to spend a tour. We're going to have a, we have a lovely guide, Maria, who's going to take us around. We're going to have a little bit of focus today on Schönbrunn Palace. This, of course, was the house of the Emperor Franz um, Franz Josef, the last uh, emperor that resided here in Vienna. Uh, and it is a sprawling palace uh, that we will see a, a part of the interior uh, staterooms. Uh, and uh, we're also going to take time to learn a little bit about Austrian apple strudel. Um, so we've organized to to visit a, a strudel show and they're going to give us a demonstration. Um, we've all tried apple strudel. They have it at Loblaws. Um, but I tell you, when you when you uh, uh, when you try Austrian apple strudel, uh, nothing else compares as far as I'm concerned. So they're going to show you exactly how to make it and give you the recipe. It's uh, it's not without work, but uh, let me tell you, the result is amazing. So we're going to have a great day um, looking around. Um, but as with any of our trips. You know, if you've already been to Vienna, maybe you've already been to Schönbrunn Palace, you can go out on your own. Um, one of the beauties is I'm, of course, going to be hosting this trip is I know this city like the back of my hand. Uh, so um, if there's something that in particular that you want to see, maybe you're a fan of um, uh, Gustav Hundertwasser, the, the architect that does all these wonky buildings. Um, maybe you want to go and do something like that or you want to visit a Klimt, uh, Gustav Klimt exhibit uh, or something like that. I can basically point you in any direction so you can get an experience of Vienna like no other. We'll have a welcome dinner, of course. Um, very good chance it might be something like Wiener Schnitzel, um, but uh, I also know some of the best eateries in town. Uh, so we'll make uh, the most of uh, a full day in Vienna. Um, we're then going to head south. So we're going to drive down. Um, and, and Vienna is sort of lightly rolling hills. We're going to pass kind of the foothills of the eastern part of the Alps as we make our way down to Styria. And this part of the country is known for uh, its, uh, its, its rolling hills. This is actually an area called Vulcanland or Volcano Land. Um, there aren't any volcanoes anymore, or at least the volcanoes have been extinct for a long, long time. But the ge geological features of this land are defined by this original, um, um, uh, this, these, um, these volcanoes. Uh, and uh, most importantly, though, the terroir, the, 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 um, the land, the ground, the earth, is um, very, very mineral rich as a result of um, these volcanoes from the past. So this is kind of like, this region is like the breadbasket of, uh, of, of Austria. You get uh, all kinds of fruits and vegetables and wine. Um, and so I will say this tour definitely has a bit of a culinary and wine focus to it. Um, and, you know, we're going to see a lot more. So even if you're somebody that's not so much into wine, um, we're going to show you lots of other great things and, and products that they produce in Austria. Um, 
But certainly if you are somebody that enjoys wine, you're going to have an absolute blast because um, you're going to taste. Uh, we, we have a very limited, sadly, uh, limited selection of Austrian wines available in Canada. And uh, I'm going to show you some that uh, you you will have never heard of or tried before. Um, and you're going to be just blown away. Uh, I'm really proud uh, and I'm sorry for the for the kind of crappy picture, but we're going to stay here in uh, Schloss Castle Kapfenstein. That's the castle here at the top of the mountain um, with these incredible views over the rolling countryside. It's a family owned castle, has been in the family for generations. It's just a super cool place to stay because, I mean, let's face it, how often do you get to stay in a castle? So it's a, a great place for us to enjoy our time. Um, our first full day of touring around the region is going to take us to a couple of key highlights. And the first one, which is not pictured here, we're gonna, we're gonna visit a, 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 the so-called Berghofer uh, oil mill. Uh, one of the products that this region is so famous for is pumpkin seeds. Uh, and they make pumpkin seed oil, uh, which again, we are not super familiar with in Canada. People who are really health conscious will probably know of all of the benefits of pumpkin seed oil. Frankly, I think it just tastes amazing. Um, and so we're going to go and see how pumpkin seed oil is made in Austria. They're famous for it here. And not to mention taste it and see all of the things that you can make with it. I can pretty much guarantee you now that you're probably going to want to take a couple of bottles with you. Um, and uh, I'll be warning everybody. It's like we still have two weeks to go on this trip. So, you know, there's only so many of these delicious products that you're going to find that you're going to be able to take. Um, but nonetheless, uh, a bottle of Austrian pumpkin seed oil will definitely be one of them. The other thing that we're going to visit, and I, I get so excited about this, we're going to visit the Zotter Chocolate Factory. Uh, again, we probably don't necessarily associate Austria with chocolate. Um, but uh, Karl Zotter, who is a, quite an interesting and odd character, um, built sort of from the ground up. He, he was one of these rags to riches fellows that built um, a, 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 an organic chocolate factor. He sources all of his beans uh, on a fair trade basis from all over the world. Um, and his whole factory, and I, I can't disclose too much, but it's very quirky. Um, it's a little bit like he's a little bit like a Charlie in the Chocolate Factory kind of a, a character. So this is always a highlight to the trip. Um, in fact, here's a picture of me um, with uh, uh, with uh, sorry, I said Carl Zotter. It's Joseph Zotter, um, who is the uh, the uh, the founder and the proprietor. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I I devoted, in fact, a whole ca chapter of my book to Joseph and his philosophy about hospitality and how he expresses that through his chocolate factory. And also what we overlook behind us here, he has what he calls an edible farm uh, because he raises animals all in an organic and a free range basis. Um, all of which can be consumed in the restaurant, which sounds a bit weird, but if you really think about it, it's done, um, uh, they, they spend a lot of effort in educating school children about the origin of food uh, and, uh, and and food production and the importance of, of free range and organic and all the rest of it. All in all, as I say, it's really a, a very insightful and interesting place to visit. Um, and I'm always thrilled to bring uh, guests uh, to visit uh, um, Joseph and his uh, and his chocolate factory. Um, we're going to take another day and visit the so-called South Styrian wine route. So we're going to head to the south towards the border of uh, of Slovenia, uh, and uh, uh, along the way we'll pass a, a beautiful castle called Segau Castle. And uh, but most importantly, we're going to uh, learn a little bit about the differences, the nuances between the wine regions of Austria. And so Styria in and itself has about five different regions just within the province that are defined by the types of grapes that they grow, the type of terroir, and then ultimately, of course, the wines that they produce. And um, in this region, there are um, little um, uh, sort of family owned um, they call them Buschenschank in Austria, which is like a it's a it's a farmer's outlet. So it's a special license that they get that enables them to directly sell on the premises um, their own food products as well as wine. Um, they serve up these wonderful um, snack plates of uh, local cured meats and cheeses and je jellies and jams and wine. Um, and it's uh, once again, sitting amongst the rolling uh, vineyards of, of the area. It's, it's, it's magical. Uh, and uh, you'll, it, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll have truly, truly an amazing day. I want to point out as well that we have designed this trip, that there is also free time. So it, I'm, I'm telling you about a lot of the things that we're doing, but we're planning it on purpose so that you're back 
at the hotel and can enjoy Castle Kapfenstein and the area around and go for some walks and enjoy the countryside. So it's not all go, go, go. Um, there is a lot in this itinerary, but there's also time to uh, enjoy things. And one of the days that we're going to uh, um, have some a little bit of leisure time is when we go down to Bad Gleichenberg. So um, as you may know, Bad in Austria means bath or what we would refer to as a spa. And there are many of them scattered around Austria. And Gleichenberg is as a town that's perhaps one of the most famous ones in the eastern part of Austria. Uh, so we will, uh, first of all, tour the beautiful gardens uh, that um, in May will be coming into bloom with the traditional sort of spring uh, flowers. Um, and then we'll head to the uh, thermal spa facility. You can see a, an aerial picture of it here, um, where we'll get to spend you know, pretty much as much time as we want. Um, typically, uh, you you spend a couple of hours. For those that wish, they have all kinds of saunas and steam baths and thermal pools. Um, and if you haven't ever had the opportunity to experience um, what uh, spa facilities uh, like this are like in Europe, um, this is simply a great example. And, and there'll be other opportunities on this trip. Uh, and, and this is sort of a bit of a taster. So it's a great way to spend the day and we'll have that whole afternoon at leisure um, to enjoy the spa at Bad Gleichenberg. Um, we're then going to head out uh, the next day to, uh, to uh, one of the inactive volcanoes, specifically Klöch, um, and uh, learn a little bit about the history and the impact that the volcanoes from centuries ago had on the region and the terroir. And we're going to go across the so-called Traminer wine route this day. And, uh, you know, you've probably heard of Gewürz Traminer, which is, of course, a, uh, a white wine variety. Um, there are other kinds of Traminers. Uh, and uh, so we're going to explore a little bit of those. In particular, we're going to make a stop and visit Stefan Crispel. Um, and Mr. Crispel uh, is known because he had for at least one year, if not more, um, he was rated by the uh, International uh, Wine Rating Agency, whichever one it is, to have the best Sauvignon Blanc in the world. So uh, again, we don't uh, really give a lot of regard to Austrian wines, but they really produce some incredible stuff. Um, I visited Crispel before. Uh, he's got a great spot and they produce really some top, top, top rated wines that are not all that expensive, um, you know, compared to what we're used to at home. So we'll have a chance to do a little tasting and taste some of his great wines and, and the food that goes along with it. Um, so after we uh, wrap up our time in uh, in Styria, we're going to uh, make our way. We're going to do a, a lovely, it's going to be pretty much an all day drive, of course, with stops along the way that's going to take us uh, from uh, Kapfenstein um, via Graz. So we're going to stop for lunch in Graz. Uh, and uh, this town, which is the second largest uh, city in Austria, uh, a university town is very youthful. Uh, and uh, I have a great spot for lunch. And you'll get a, a real flavor of this city that kind of honestly is worth a whole visit in and of itself. Um, but we're focusing more sort of on the countryside and the rural aspect. But we will spend a couple hours and get a, a brief tour uh, of the city. So you'll get a, a, a taste of what that's all about. And we're then going to head up. We're going to cross through the eastern end of the Alps, um, through some uh, valleys with some amazing scenery. And we're going to end up in uh, at uh, Lake Wolfgang, which is one of the lakes that comprise the so-called Salzkammergut, uh, which there's no other way to translate it than the Austrian Lake District, uh, which is surrounded by beautiful mountains. You get a little bit of a taste of the scenery here. Quite honestly, the picture doesn't even do it justice. Um, here in St. Wolfgang, we are actually going to be staying at uh, at least from an Austrian standpoint, a very fair, famous hotel called the Weisses Rüssel, or the White Horse, the White Horse Inn. Uh, this, uh, this hotel has been uh, featured in one of the most famous German language produced movies ever made um, many years back. Uh, this is, we're, you know, we're going back uh, 60 or 70 years, uh, but the hotel has a wonderful location right on the lake um, overlooking this beautiful scenery. Uh, so it's going to be a great base for us as we explore uh, Lake Wolfgang and some of the other lakes. We're going to take a, a boat tour around the lake one day um, on our on our first sort of full day there. We're going to do a, a mountain railway, a cogwheel railway up where we'll have a panoramic view overlooking um, Lake Wolfgang and some of the other lakes. Um, but we'll also have time for those that wish 
to make sure that we do a little bit of walking uh, and exploring through some of the um, towns and villages. You can just walk along the edge of the lake. It's it's truly a, a, a beautiful spot. Um, you can't visit the Lake District of Austria without visiting Hallstatt. Um, you've probably seen this photo before. If you Google pictures of Austria, I pretty much guarantee you this one will come up. Um, Hallstatt, uh, which uh, has a UNESCO heritage um, for its small old town. It's a very tiny village, but it's surrounded by these um, these uh, these these limestone mountains. Uh, one of them is the Dachstein. You can't quite quite see it here, but it's a glacial mountain that's just off to the left here um, with this uh, perfectly smooth lake reflecting the town and the mountains. It's magical. Um, it is a fairly busy town in the sense that they um, run bus tours here from Salzburg. Uh, so, uh, uh, you know, we, we I can't tell you we'll be the only ones there, uh, but we will get a chance to wander around, take some snapshots like this, and we'll also go up to the mountain in behind here to the salt mine. So this area was known for the production of salt, which of course in this day and age has has less significance, but of course then salt was a very, very prized commodity. Uh, and so I won't go into the details of all that, but um, going inside the salt mines is is once again, always one of these highlights that uh, I love to bring members on because um, we learn a little bit about um, not only the history, but also the importance. And they still do salt mining today. Uh, so it'll be another little thing to add to your um, gift bag of goodies that you bring back from Austria. Um, we're gonna have a, a, a whole day free here. So for some members, it's an opportunity to just wander around the town. Um, St. Wolfgang is a lovely town in and of itself. There's lots of little shops with wonderful crafts and things to buy. But at the same time, um, you might also, uh, for those who have not been to Salzburg before, because we're not putting Salzburg in this itinerary, but Salzburg is actually um, uh, less than an hour away. So we can uh, do a, a day trip into Salzburg very easily. Um, if you love the mountains, uh, we can go up another cable car nearby called the Zulferbahn. There's also a puppet museum uh, that, uh, that we can visit and numerous uh, hikes, either flat around the lake area or going up into the hills. So there's a million different options. And again, the whole point uh, of uh, uh, me being along on this trip to not only show you a good time, but also sort of make sure that you kind of have the experience that you want to have and do the kind of things that you like to do. So um, I generally sort of form a majority of, of or, or I should say a majority, but a, you know, a group of members who are interested in doing one particular thing, and then we'll, we'll trot off and do that. Um, and uh, as I say, uh, if nothing else, it's a nice day to relax and enjoy the great facilities that the, the actual, that the uh, White Horse Inn has to offer. Uh, so after uh, our our time in the Lake District, we are then going to uh, drive uh, uh, over a corner of Germany. Uh, it's the, sort of the quickest way to get to Western Austria. Um, on the way, we're going to stop for lunch at Riedel. So many of you who are sort of wine connoisseurs, if you will, have probably come across those beautiful uh, crystal stemware called Riedel glasses. They are produced in Austria in a little town called Kufstein, uh, which is not far outside of Innsbruck. So we're going to have a chance to see how they produce the uh, very, very high quality uh, Riedel glasses there in Austria. And so later on that afternoon, we will arrive into Innsbruck, uh, where we will spend the next few days. Uh, as I as I mentioned before, Innsbruck, as you probably know, hosted the um, Winter Olympics twice. Um, in fact, they're vying to hold the Olympics yet again. It would be, I think, the first city in the world to hold it three times if they are, in fact, able to uh, secure the Olympics. Um, and uh, we're going to meet our wonderful guide. She's a terrific lady, Elizabeth Grasser, um, who I've had before on all of my trips. Um, her family actually has a bell foundry, which will undoubtedly be on top of our tour. And they make hand make bells. But I'm not talking about the little ones, although they make the little ones too. But they build the real giant ones that will uh, adorn cathedrals around the world. Um, and so that's produced in Innsbruck as well. Uh, so we have a lovely hotel that we're staying at right in the heart of the old town of Innsbruck. Uh, and here we're going to uh, drive around and uh, um, uh, uh, and see uh, some of the colorful town of Innsbruck that, as I say, is 
surrounded by mountains, both on the south and the north. In this case, we're looking at the so-called North Keta, the North Range of Mountains, uh, and uh, we'll be led around by Elizabeth, who's going to show us some of the historical sites of the city, uh, the most famous one being the uh, Golden Estachel, the Golden Roof, uh, and uh, as well as some of the other um, uh, parts of the old town that are really, really noteworthy. And again, a, a lot of people have uh, are familiar with Innsbruck because of the, the you know, the winter sport aspect of it, um, which we'll get a chance to see as well. In fact, we'll have an afternoon free uh, for those that are really keen. You can uh, head out to see the uh, Olympics ski jump at Aksamalitsum, um, where um uh, where all the ski jumping action happens. Um, we'll uh, have an, an, a Tyrolean evening because you can't go to Tyrol without seeing that famous dance. Uh, once again, if you've visited Austria before, maybe you will have seen the 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 slap dance, if you will, that they do dressed in all of their uh, later hosen and other outfits. Um, and it's, uh, it's quite a show. And uh, believe me, we will have a feast of uh, this dish here called Tiroler Grustel, uh, Tyrolean, I can't even translate it exactly, but it's a delicious uh, assortment of meats and potatoes and egg and oh, so good. I can hardly wait to sink my teeth into it. Um, we can't visit uh, Innsbruck without heading up into the mountains, so we will take the cable car. Um, actually, first of all, it's a mountain railway that heads up to a mid station and then another mid station. And we're going to go all the way up um, to, oops, sorry, the top of the mountain here. Uh, you can't quite see it on this map, but anyway, on the top of the mountain, we're going to be up at 2,300 meter, meters above sea level. And not only will you have an incredible view looking over the Inn Valley, uh, where Innsbruck is located, but also to some of the other of Austria's highest peaks. Um, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, of course, we will play the weather by ear a little bit. Uh, so we may switch the days around to make sure that we pick the best possible day uh, so that you can get uh, uh, some amazing views from the top of the cable car. Once again, we'll uh, have free time in the afternoon. So for those that um, are keen and doing a little bit of high alpine walking, there's some great um, and relatively easy trails from up there that you can um, go around and explore a little bit and, and breathe in that amazing fresh Austrian alpine air. Uh, so that's uh, that's what we'll do that day. We'll also take in, as I say, some of the other um, aspects of Innsbruck, um, Ambras Castle, uh, which is really incredible. And it, it, most people aren't aware that you can find such uh, castles that are really you would think you would only find in the bigger cities like Vienna. Um, this this one is a is a real jaw dropper. Uh, so we'll we'll spend part of the day uh, touring Ambras Castle and its gardens. Um, we'll then have again more time to uh, explore either other parts of Innsbruck or for those that are interested in crystal, um, Swarovski, as you may be aware, is also um, headquartered uh, just outside of Innsbruck. So they have a, a terrific um, interpretive museum and an insight into how Chris, a Swarovski crystal is produced. Uh, it's called Swarovski Crystal World. So for those that are interested in Swarovski crystal, uh, it's it's really an amazing museum. So we may uh, we may go off and visit that as well. Um, that will wrap up our main trip uh, around Austria. So as I say, for those that are going to uh, end it uh, all there, we will fly back from uh, either Innsbruck or Munich. Um, so both options are possible. Uh, and otherwise, we're going to continue on for four more days in South Tyrol, uh, which is immediately south of Innsbruck. And so we're going to start off by taking an incredible train ride across the Brenner Pass, so uh, which is the, the demarcation point between Austria and Italy. Uh, and we will arrive in Bolzano. And this is Walter Square in the heart of Bolzano, which is the capital city, the principal city of uh, of South Tyrol. And again, once again, we're going to be staying in the heart of the city. In fact, there's a little ice cream shop down here that I absolutely adore. Uh, and the food, if the food in Austria is great, the food in South Tyrol is even greater. So like take the best of Italian cuisine and the best of Austrian cuisine and put it all together in a pot. And that's what you'll find in South Tyrol. Because again, this region is a bread basket. So they produce uh, a whole assortment of wines, but also apples and various other fruits and all kinds of vegetables because there's a microclimate around here. So we'll be exploring a little bit about that while we're in Bolzano. Um, we're gonna visit, of course, um, 
the city at center itself. Uh, and uh, in particular, we will go to the special museum that they created devoted to Utsi, the Iceman. So if you remember back around, I guess it was probably 20 years ago now, they discovered a uh, a, a, a an Iceman who was buried in the glacier up high up in the Alps. Uh, and uh, as it turns out, uh, he was literally just on the border between Austria and Italy, but they geolocated him, if you will. And he was, in fact, in Italy, which is why he is now in a museum. Um, and you can actually see this 5,300 year old mummy. Uh, they call him Utsi. Uh, in English, they just call him the Iceman. And it's 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 really quite fascinating when you read about all the history and like if you think about what life would have been like in this region all those years ago. Um, we're also going to take the cable car up to visit the um, Renon I, uh, Earth pyramids that you can see them here. These are super cool because we, it, as you can see, the Earth has eroded away uh, and left these big boulders on the top of all of these. It's kind of I've never seen anything like this anywhere else. I'm sure that they, other examples exist. Um, but uh, here outside of Bolzano, um, it's super cool. After all of that, believe it or not, we'll still have some free time. And uh, again, for those who didn't get enough spa uh, back in Bad Gleichenberg or at the hotel in uh, St. Wolfgang, uh, the nearby uh, town of Marano is the most famous spa in, uh, in northern Italy. Uh, and so there's an opportunity to go there and take in the hot springs um, from Marano. Uh, uh, the Bolzano is also in the heart of the Dolomites. So if you aren't familiar with the Dolomites, these are the very, very jagged peaks uh, because of the limestone that uh, erodes away, the water erodes away very quickly. Um, and so we're going to take a trip up to uh, um, uh, the Alpe di Siusi, which is the largest alpine meadow in the Alps. Um, and this is really the heart of the Dolomites. And we get up here again on a cable car and we'll have an incredible view seeing these very, very striking um, mountain formations. It's it's breathtaking. Um, I love the Dolomites. I think it's an amazing part of uh, of Italy and with all the little villages around. Uh, we'll do one other day, uh, which will be our last full day in uh, in Italy on our extension program. And we'll head up the Venosta Valley, um, which at the very end of it basically leads to the a border back to Austria as well as over to Switzerland. And they have this giant lake um, that is actually a reservoir. Um, and when they filled it up, as happens when they do these things, uh, a whole town was submerged. And all that is remaining is this interesting bell tower from the church of that town. Um, so it's quite a photographable site. Photographable. I'm like, I'm not sure that's a word, uh, but it, it's uh, it's a great one. I've passed by here many times. There's a, a lot of very picturesque villages in the Venosta Valley, um, and we'll we'll do some stops at some of them as we uh, as we tour this very picturesque part of uh, of Southern Tyrol. Um, we'll then all hop on the train together and make that journey back north to Munich. It's actually not all that far. I think the total train ride uh, that goes again via Innsbruck is about four hours. Uh, from uh, Bolzano all the way back to the heart of Munich. Um, we'll have our last night there uh, and we'll have a, enjoy a little bit of German culture um, because I'm going to take you out to the Augustiner Breu, which is one of uh, Munich's most famous beer gardens. It's literally a uh, stone's throw from the railway station, so the area of downtown that we're going to be staying. Um, so we'll go out and raise a big beer stein uh, and enjoy a, a little bit of German culture. So we'll, we'll have covered uh, then uh, Austria, Germany, and Italy. So three countries all in one trip uh, and uh, um, hopefully not be too hung over the next day when we have to catch our flight um, to head back. So that wraps up our trip. Um, I hope that uh, that was uh, informative for you. As you can probably tell, I'm super passionate about this part of the world. Um, I'm grateful for the ability to go back to Austria all the time. As I mentioned, I'm heading there in, in two weeks uh, and uh, uh, can never get enough of this amazing country. Uh, details, of course, are all in your uh, program itinerary, which if you haven't already gotten, we'll send out to you along with a copy uh, with a replay of this webinar. Um, the program, May 10th to the 25th, here's our prices in Canadian dollars. I make note that the single supplement is, is as small as we could possibly make it. Uh, so it's quite good. We have a, a fairly limited number of single rooms, um, but if you're interested in, in doing this tour on your own, um, I think it represents pretty good value for a whole two weeks in Austria with um, many inclusions. Um, as usual on our trips, um, we have great hotels and I can 
really vouch for every one of the hotels on this trip because I've been to all of them. Uh, and uh, we have breakfast every day. We have um, either a lunch or a dinner. Uh, let me tell you, nobody ever gets hungry on a wheel and anchor trip. Um, and if for some reason you're ever hungry, you just let me know and I'll make sure that I give you something to eat. Um, and the food is not only um, plentiful, but it's also really, really good because we make a concerted effort not to eat at tour group restaurants. It's one of my main philosophies. If there's tour buses parked in front, I want to go someplace else. Um, and so that's how we've um, built in the program. We've got, again, all these inclusions that are part of the program that you can read through at your own leisure. Um, the extension program to South Tyrol uh, is uh, noted here. So for the extra five days, it's uh, $29.90 and uh, $39.90 for single um, occupancy. And once again, your uh, train ticket down, accommodation with breakfast every day, um, meals, all the admissions. And uh, we have a wonderful guide as well in Bolzano, who's going to show us um, this great part of Italy. Uh, so in addition, of course, airfare and uh, trip cancellation insurance, which we are happy to facilitate for you um, if you decide to join us on this amazing trip uh, and uh, to get in and out of uh, Vienna and back out of Munich. Uh, generally speaking, and we don't like to make too many representations about price because airfares tend to be all over the map these days, um, but uh, you can get over there uh, for sort of in around 1000 to 1400 bucks um, in May and uh, a little bit more if you're obviously coming from the West Coast of Canada. Um, and uh, if you sign up for our trip uh, in the next six weeks, we will uh, give you an extra couple of hundred bucks off. That is a... a, a, a um, a little early booking bonus that we're able to secure when we um, sign up uh, folks early, then the, the hotels give us a little bit of a bonus. So uh, we pass that on to you. And uh, now it's time for questions, Paula. I uh, wonder if any questions Got have come. Yeah, I have a couple that have been submitted here for me. Um, member asking with regards to the weather, how would you suggest one pack for the different climates they'll experience this time yeah, of year? So so May is a beautiful time of the year. I mean, typically it's quite warm already in Austria. Now, when I say warm, I'm talking about low 20s. Um, of course, when we go up into the mountains, uh, it's going to be cooler because, you know, you get up to 2000 meters above sea level and the temperature is going to drop by 10 degrees. So uh, that being said, while there it's a possibility that there's even still snow on the ground when we visit the top of the mountain in Innsbruck, um, there won't be that much. But even up there, uh, you know, you, you, it's unlikely the temperature is going to be much below 10 degrees. It could be colder. So you can wear spring wear like you would wear um, at home in Canada in May. The same type of uh, uh, stuff will apply there, but always with a bit of an extra layer for the, the cooler days when we are up in the mountains. Um, uh, South Tyrol is warmer. Um, as I say, it's actually a bit of a microclimate. So it, it could, in May... Uh, anybody's guess, but it, it could easily hit the mid twenties uh, in May. Fantastic. Um, have another member here that is asking about the hiking that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Can you give an idea of sort of what the distance or ability of uh, the hikes that um, might be doable in their free time? Yeah, for sure. So, so we 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 didn't build any hikes into the program because we wanted this program to be sort of accessible to th both those who are you know who are who are walkers and hikers and those who aren't. Um, but uh, I can tell you that um, Austria has an incredible network of hiking trails, uh, and so there will be easy hikes, meaning you know three four kilometers, you know a couple of hours. Um, at most that are uh, at uh, that are available at pretty much all of the stops. Um, if someone is a real hiker, uh, then, for example, in Innsbruck or even for that matter in St. Wolfgang, there are more challenging hikes. Um, you can theoretically walk from the Hafele car that I mentioned from the, the, the mountain station of the cable car all the way back to Innsbruck. That's about a five hour hike and, and is about uh, 2003 to, uh, to about uh, 1500 vertical meters uh, of, uh, of, of, of drop. So you, you'd want to be a serious hiker to do that. So that is a possibility. Those would be unguided. That would be on your own. But uh, as I say, they're super well marked. So um, for those who are hikers, I do encourage you come along on this trip. Um, that being said, um, I will um, drop a little hint. We are coming out with a uh, one of our newest active wellness programs, 
that will be a hiking tour of Austria. So if you're somebody that's really interested in walking in the mountains, um, that's another trip that we're going to offer in the fall of next year. Um, and it will be out uh, probably in uh, the latter part of October. So, um, which is not to say, as I say, there is hiking on this trip, but it's not the focal point of it. So it would probably be more easy hikes. I hope that's a, a long answer to a short question. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Uh, we've had a lot more active uh, inquiries exactly. as of late. And we so have more space for our active members. We have some we great are. coming out, so. Perfect. Uh, so far, those are the only questions that have come in to me. For Very anyone good. that is wanting a little bit more information on this, you can reach out to Barbara or myself for the additional information document. And the itinerary will be sent along with the replay and was also in last week's newsletter, I believe. Yes, it was in last week's newsletter. Um, it's always on the trip list, which is included in every newsletter. It's also on the website. Uh, and uh, again, we'll send you a copy of that. So um, it should be easy to find. If it isn't, drop us a note. We'll send it over to you in a hurry. Um, and of course, Paula and Barb's email addresses are there. I'd be delighted to have you along on this trip. Um, again, if you you may not may or may not have thought of 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 sort of touring Austria more in depth, I can't encourage it more. It has so many hidden gems that are just um, off the radar screen of most travelers from Canada, uh, and uh, I'm going to be delighted to take you around and show you um, this country that is very near and dear to my heart. So uh, take care. Thanks for joining us. Uh, and uh, we'll catch you on the next webinar. Just a heads up for tomorrow, we have our winter trip webinar. If you didn't already make plans for this upcoming winter, we do still have spots away on some of our liveaways. So uh, the uh, that webinar is tomorrow. Uh, and if you don't have the link to it, Paul is probably madly searching for I'm, it now. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, if you if you didn't see it in the webinar in the newsletter. Uh, if you refer to the, the newsletter, it's the link to that webinar is in there. Um, in other words, if you're like, oh, I wasn't sure what I was doing. Oh, Paula just put it in the chat. I got box. it. Um, so we're going to uh, do a quick synopsis of uh, what trips are still available for this winter, um, predominantly our live away program. So check that out tomorrow, same time, 11 a.m. Toronto time. And uh, and that's all for today. So take care once again, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow, if not uh, if not later. Bye for now.